All right. We are live. Okay. You good? Yeah, I need to check the swimming kit, right? Let me check the boot. Oh, John Henry, don't take off your hat, please. Don't take off your hat, please. Oh, me. Can wash it, man. I need my check on Can wash your library, my check. All right, so here we are. Are you ready to go to the library? Are you ready? John, are you ready to go to the library? Yes. Yeah, she's ready. We're on our way to the library and then to go and swim as a family. And then see the chairman we did here. John Henry. John. Huh? You're ready to go, okay? Ready to go. All right. Mommy, mommy is steady, eh? Can you see her? She's steady. Oh, <laughs> Hello, guys. Yeah. We're on our way to the library first. Then we'll go and swim. We'll go get some ice cream. We'll come home. Relax a bit. And then we go have dinner out today. Family time today, okay? No work, family time. All right. <laughs> uh, Madam, Madam is studying in her seat, eh? Yeah. All she wants to do is to go to the swimming. She's so ready for the swimming today, so. Uh, She's the better swimmer. She swims better than me. Eh? For me, I don't know anything. No. I grew up in Chokoway. Sea day there. Sea, right by the ocean. But I still don't know how to swim. <laughs> All because of one slap that my father gave me when I was young and I went to swim and I almost got drowned. So that slap, it reset my brain from swimming. I never love water. <laughs> uh, no, our parents, the way they can discipline you. Eh? So somebody went to tell my parents that I almost got drowned in the sea. The way, they, 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 the way he disciplined me, eh? I remember, it made me for, forget about swimming all my life. So I'm a terrible swimmer. I'm hoping to pick up the skill of swimming this summer. So we've started and we're spending more time. My wife knows how to swim. She has some skills, not like a pro, a little bit. So she can manage to carry her weight in the water and all of that and float. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today is family one. Yeah, so John Henry and uh, Joanna in the back, my wife and myself in the front. We're just going out. Mm -hmm. yeah. How has your weekend been going for you, especially if you are not working? Are you spending time with your family? Are you spending time? I hope you are not in uh, the beer parlor drinking with friends and leaving your wife and children. Huh? Let's make time and spend quality time with our, our families. Especially our nuclear families. We can always make time for friends. Um, don't spend the most important hours of your weekend with friends. Especially if it doesn't add value to your life, okay? You know, that is what where a lot of us struggle. And if you're a woman and you're watching too, I hope you are not spending the quality part of your weekend, especially if you're not working with friends, gossiping about everything from Ukraine to Afghanistan. Let's learn to spend quality time. If you don't enjoy spending time with your spouse, that means there are things you need to work on. For me, I enjoy spending quality time with my wife. She is my comedian. <laughs> we laugh together. She is my chief comedian. Uh, uh, she's the only person who can fratulate, fat, or mess, big one, smelly one. And they will look at me and then when when I when I when I look at it, I say, hmm, I can smell something. Who did that? You say, hey, what what do you think is that? Is me perfume rice? <laughs> and sometimes when I ask, her, ah, ah, mommy, you just released that one without giving me uh, a warning, warning that it's coming. She say, you look at you. You are lucky that you are moving the one giving you one one right now. Go to Kolebu. Uh, you know my wife. She's space gun. She was raised like a girl, even though she's that way. She'll tell you, go to Kolebu, which means the hospital in Accra, that big hospital. Eh? She'll tell you, go to the hospital, go to Kolebu. 
you go and see people who are there and they are the doctors are begging them to just mess one day just one mess so that they can release them they are not <laughs> you, you are putting that i'm messing in front of you you are smiling <laughs> You see, your, your, your soulmate has to be your friend, has to be your laugh mate, have to be your comedian. It's possible. Some of us, we cannot hold this kind of, um, you know, moments, have these moments with our spouses because we don't, we don't talk. There is no communication. All right. I encourage you to practice open communication, no judgments, just being real. When you are real, look, you have nothing to worry about when you're real. Okay. These are little things we do to improve. Oh, ice cream anyway. Okay, go up in anyway, you know. Okay, that's ice cream point. Have they even opened? I don't think they have even opened the ice cream. Okay. All right, so that is it there. Ata mm mukoni mo asha asha e kolebu kolebu na jele po e ana mukoni ba asha e hospital e ame fa me be wale okay. O wife asha asha e o o o o hien ka ka jele kala ka no. Fevita love e. We did not talk for English. Now you talk for my my local language so that my people who we'll speak Ghana can understand the thing about the mess. Eh? <laughs> yeah, you are not lost. All right. The weather is pretty nice today. It's neither too cold nor too warm. It's just nice. I like it. It's not too bad yeah last three days was even better it was so beautiful yeah um i probably have about three more videos to do for today so um keep keep, keep an eye on that even even if you are busy and you cannot watch it don't worry don't don't come online and watch me if you have something important go and do whatever you have to do which is so important whenever you have time you can always watch the replay of my videos okay um, I have two more videos to do questions to expect as a visitor when you're arriving and then questions to expect as a PR holder if you apply for express entry or provincial nominee and you got your PR and this is your first time you are arriving in Canada as a PR what kind of questions to expect I was asked questions when I became a permanent resident some time back so I'll share those uh, experiences with you and then I will also do a video with my my co-host on man-to-man -man family podcast we are gonna come today uh, we are gonna come your way today with a video on something about men in marriage okay so stay tuned whichever one you are interested in stay tuned and enjoy it okay What is baby doing? Is baby sleeping? What is baby doing? Hmm? He's playing? He's playing, okay, that's good. There's no space there. Everybody has passed. Unless I pack 
back here, okay? Let me fit in the one behind me. Parallel parking between two cars. If you did your road test, you probably did parallel parking, right? They made you do parallel parking. That's what I'm doing. Parking between two cars, yeah. If your reversing skills no good, by the time you realize, boom, <laughs> you don't hit them. <laughs> Squeezing myself between two cars, huh? All right, we're good. Job done. Wow, somebody was driving a nice fancy car. Did you hear the sound? Sports, sports car, very nice. <laughs> Right? Should I pick it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Say hello to everybody. Say hello. Say hello. Say hello. The car? Okay. What color is the car? White. White, that's correct. Yeah, yeah me back. Okay, time to go. Let's go. She's talking about the pool. There was, there's, there's a pool in front of the library and she's talking about the pool. Hmm? Oh, What's that? Can you see the hat? There is a hat on the screen, the phone. Look on the phone. Can you see the hat? Hat. 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 Oh, yucky. Mm -hmm. yucky. Mm -hmm. What is yucky? Can you see? Is there something that is yucky? Yeah. What's that? It's oh, tea. she saw something on the floor and she said it's yucky. <laughs> it's yucky. Mm. Mm, there's a boat. Can you see the boat? There's a boat. Can you see the boat? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful boat. Canoe, canoe. Mm -hmm. Canoe. Mm -hmm. Canoe. Canoe. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put you down now so we can walk, okay? Yeah. And she's wearing the Arsenal jersey under it, eh? You know, saying that Arsenal girl be that too. Eh? If she go away, she says she did love Manchester. He goes, 
for now, now Arsenal where they wear for under that one, that and Arsenal jersey. Mm. No wahala. Asna. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. See, if you're there with chair, you just go press this one if you're on a wheelchair. The door will automatically open for you and automatically close too. Okay, come, let me sanitize your hands, come. Okay, put your hand here. Good. Now you can rub your hand, rub it. Good. Okay, here we are. We are in the library. Cuckoo. Hi, ladies, how are you? Good. Happy weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Bye. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know. Mm hmm. Go, 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 go. I'm sleep then. Somebody is already sleeping. Oh, John Henry is sleeping already. So, so we'll just allow Joanna to have fun. Okay. Well, as we, I sit here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come, let me take off your jacket for now, okay? Come, I got to take off your jacket for you. No, no. I need to need that. Joanna, please come over. Let me take your jacket off. Yeah, she wants to pick a book first. Do you want any book from there? Okay, pick any book you want. Which book do you want? Which one? You want this one? It's in French, though. Okay, let's go. Yeah, you can do that. Ah, uh, there is also another one here. Do you want this one too? No. Okay, then let's take this one and go. Just this one. Let's go. Let's go with this one. Uh, let's go. Come. Okay, let's sit down. Can you open? Whoa. Okay, let's open the other pages. And see what we got in here. Mm. There's, a, there's a few. There's a few where your French is good. Eh? Make sure they tell me what they don't write for though. My French now only. Now only. Now only. You know. <laughs> this is the way the French is. I have mango read them. <laughs> now wow. Hmm? Le petit, le petit, uh, chevreuil. Le petit chevreuil. Huh? Let me see what they write. And the interpretation another one. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you see in there? Mm, okay. What do you see in there? Snow, right? You see snow. What do you see? Spend time with mommy. Will spend time with you so that it can be on a video. Okay. Let me, let me use this opportunity to do my other videos for us. She spent time with mommy here. Daddy. Yes? Mm, e for what? E? This, this starts for A. A for Allosaurus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it looks like alligator, but it's not alligator. That's a big one. So it's dinosaur. <laughs> Every time she sees this one, she will say alligator, alligator, but it's a big alligator there. Anyway, um, so as they are busily playing there, I think I can use the time to do my other videos. Okay.
okay all right guys um i'm just going to edit the title after i finish but let me use this opportunity to uh, do my other video as my my family is spending time there um probably i should go and sit somewhere that i can have a chair okay let me sit here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is a free computer here that you can use for free without paying wi-fi so let me just sit here and do my video whilst they're having fun right okay All right, um, let me turn this one into, I've flipped it back. Yeah. All right, um, visitor's visa. Visitor's visa. What are the questions you should expect if you're on a visitor's visa? Um, if, you have, if you have not seen my old videos on visitor's visa, please look for them. They are on my YouTube channel. Some of them are also some of them are also on my facebook in fact i normally make produce those videos on facebook and then i repost them on youtube so look for them on my youtube and also my facebook i've done more than one video on visitors visa now, a visitors visa does not allow you to stay in a particular country for more than six months you know in europe they can actually issue you a visitors visa for even just one month for example, in the UK, you can get a one-month visitor's visa. You can get a three-month visitor's visa. You can get... Um, they, they, they customize their months. In Canada, they normally don't give visitor's visa in months. They give in years, okay? So the minimum you could get could be one year. They could give you two years. They could give you three years. They could give you four years. They could give you five years. The most I have seen somebody get for a visitor's visa is 10 years. I know somebody personally who got a 10 years visitor's visa. Now, the fact that you have a 10 years visitor's visa does not mean that when you enter the country, you can actually stay for up to 10 years consecutively, okay? If you have a two years visitor's visa, it does not mean when you come, you can stay consecutively, which means continuously for two years. If you have a one year, it doesn't mean you can stay continuously for one year. You must be familiar with the conditions of your visitor's visa. In most countries, the maximum you can stay if your visa duration allows you to is six months. If you stay for more than six months, you are considered to be breaching the terms of the visitor's visa. So even if you have a 10 years visitor's visa, you will need to still exit the country within the first six months. And then you can later on come again. The moment you stay for more than six months, you are no longer visiting, you are planning to stay. And that, you will need a different visa for that. What are some of the questions you should expect? One, stick to the original, stick to the original visa application documents and information, stick to that. You know when you apply for your visitor's visa, you give them reasons why you are coming, right? So just make sure that you stick to that. Stick to that same reason. Don't change the storyline. If you change the storyline, it could put you in trouble, okay? Um, some people get tourist visa or business visa to come and visit or come and explore. They are not coming to visit a family. They don't have families here. They don't have friends here. Some people do get visitor's visa not because they have families here. They have they just got it because they have travel history and they applied and they give them. This is most likely the case for people with a lot of travel experience. Um, there are a lot of people who have travel experience. They apply and then they just give them the visitor's visa. There are also a lot of people who are well to do financially. They have good jobs. They have companies. They can also apply for a visitor's visa and they get it. Then there are people who also apply for visitor's visa because they have a family member or a friend in Canada who is inviting them. Remember, for more details about Vista's Visa, watch my old videos on Vista's Visa. I did explain these things in detail. So you got a Vista's Visa. You have bought your air ticket and you are coming. What are some of the things you should expect at the airport? They will ask you questions about your purpose of travel. 
they will ask you questions about your purpose of travel what is bringing you into um, the country if it is uk what is bringing you into the country if it is us what is bringing it this question might sound very silly to some people ah but now you people will give me the visa you won't tell me say you know no say you know why they come the reason why the border official is going to ask you that same question is to see whether your situation has changed from the time they issued your visa your reason for coming has it changed if it has changed they have to be able to know so when they ask you that question they are looking for consistency if you told them you are coming to attend a conference and you got a visa to come on a conference you cannot change your reason at the airport especially if you change it <laughs> and it is not something that is allowed it could cost you your visa if you are coming here to visit a family member you cannot change the reason if you're coming here to visit a friend you have to stick to that same story you gave them when you applied for the visa the unfortunate video i did yesterday about the lady who uh, went to the u.s and had a situation huh? i believe she had a visitor's visa to go and visit the u.s she had a five years visa um, it's possible that she had other intentions of going to the u.s from the conversation between the official at the airport and the lady but you see because the reason why she was coming to the u.s the reason she gave the u.s visa consulate at the time she was applying for the reason that reason was documented and saved within the immigration database and now that lady has arrived at the airport the moment she began changing her story you see how it affected her right straightforward her visa was cancelled straightforward she was sent back home and banned for five years the people who are more likely i want you to listen i know i didn't put the title as a visitor's visa so there's a good chance many people will skip this video thinking i'm spending time with my family yeah that is why sometimes you need to watch my videos to see what i'm talking about don't just go by title you need to watch and see what they talk about um, all right um guys i'm sad to say that the highest number of visa cancellations at arriving airports in europe and in north america is mostly for people with visitors visa i'm going to say this three times so that you can enter your head the statistics show that among all the visa types those who are likely to get their visa and then when they arrive at the airport they will likely get a cancellation okay meaning that they will cancel their visa at the airport the statistics show the majority of those people who get their cancellations are normally people with visitors visa visitors visa in fact in the u.s majority of the people who go through the toughest questioning are normally the people who are on visitors visa b1 b2 in canada majority of the people who can be isolated and questioned more will likely be visitors visa holders in uk in germany majority of the people who could be isolated and questioned more will likely be visitors visa holder but why are they subjected to further questioning statistics show that many visitors visa holders do not return to their countries when they come they disappear in the system or they just vanish they come and do something else they don't go back it's just a fact you can google it in the u.s for example majority of the people with b1 b2 do not return they don't leave the country after the assessment they disappear they try to do something else to stay so you see what happens is that these immigration commissions around the world they go by data data d-a-t-a -A, statistics they check the number of people who were issued visitors visa and their date, database shows they arrive in the country and they check to see how many of them went back to the original countries after the assessment if the data shows that majority of such people do not return what happens is that they tighten their verification process for these people that is why if you are a visitor visa holder and you go to any country 
especially from from a developing part of the world like africa the continent of africa you can tell that they put you through different verification and questioning as if you are actually reapplying for your whole visa all of again the questions they ask you and sometimes it can be really stressful it's just because the fact is many people don't there are many people who are trying to get a visa visa to go for conference but they know they don't plan to attend just a conference they want to stay and disappear there are many people who want to come to the u.s to visit families but they know within themselves they are not just visiting the u.s they want to stay and so the more the data out there shows that majority of people default on their visitor visa they will continue to tighten the restrictions or the requirements and the verification if an international student comes within split seconds declare them but a visitor visa holder will show up and they will just isolate them and ask them one question hoping that they can be able to get something from these people that is why a lot of people screw up you see that if you watch the video i did yesterday about the woman who was banned in the u.s and visa was cancelled at the airport you will notice she was isolated questions after questions after questions and at one point she broke down by giving inconsistent answers simple as that this is what they do if you have ever gone through what i'm talking about comment down there so people can know that this is real so that you can take it serious they will ask you how long you plan to stay in the country if you stupidly say you plan to stay for one year you are on your own i have just told you visitors visa you cannot stay for more than six months so look at your visa first if the visa gave you one month you have to let them know you are staying within the one month if the visa gave you three months uk visa you cannot go and say you're planning to stay for more than three months it's foolishness the visa said three months you want to stay for more than three months eh? if the visa gave you six months you cannot say you want to stay for more than six months if the visa gave you one year you cannot even say you want to stay for one year too why but wait a minute choco they just gave me one year visa visa why cannot tell them why shouldn't I tell them I want to stay for one year? It is stupid because visitor's visa does not allow you to stay for more than six months in the country. Simple. Well, Chaco Milonia had a 10 years visa, visitor's visa. Why can't I tell them I want to stay for 10 years? You go and tell them. They will cast your visa right away. Because the law says you cannot stay maximum for more than six months if you are a visitor. Simple as that. duration of your stay they will ask you that question and remember you may have actually told them how long you want to stay in your can in the country when you apply for a visa you may have told them you want to stay for three weeks you may have told them you want to stay for one month you may have told them you want to stay for six months you better stick to that same thing you, know? you better stick with it when my wife was coming to visit me in canada for the first time she came on a visitor's visa as soon as she was here for six months I made her go back at that time there was no program in place to allow visitors visa holder to stay and change their visa visa there was none so i sent my wife back home i didn't want her to violate the terms even though she was given more than one year visitors visa i did not allow her to stay longer than a sisma because i was aware of it when we were booking the air ticket as well we made sure we did not book any air ticket which was longer than six months huh? I mean, everything has to line up, visitors, visa holders. What happens is that many a times, some people get more than six months of a visitor's visa. They may get one year, they may get two years, they may get three years. And they are not aware that visitor's visa does not allow you to stay for more than six months. It doesn't allow you. So when they come to the country and they are being interviewed at the airport by the official, how long do you plan to stay in the country? They forget themselves and they mention exactly what the visa says, two years. And then at that point, the official know already you don't plan to go back because these people are just ignorant. You see that? Be careful. The video I did yesterday with the U.S. example, the lady had told the uh, visa of officer at the U.S. embassy that she was planning to stay in U.S. for three weeks, visiting her family, member her mother. But during the questioning, you can see that the officer was able to find out other things hmm, that the, your ticket your, your ticket doesn't say you are going back she actually bought a return ticket but then the return ticket time was not matching the time that she said she was going to spend in the u.s you see him 
you, you say you are staying for three weeks, if you are buying a return ticket, make sure your return ticket shows that you are returning in three weeks too. If you decide not to buy a return ticket, it's your thing. But if you are buying a return ticket, your return ticket date cannot be different. Or sh it, it, okay, I shouldn't even say cannot. It is not advisable that you go and choose a return ticket, which is so different and longer than the time that you give the visa officer that you are actually going back. It, it, that is where the problem starts from. You said you want to stay for three weeks, but it looks like your, your return ticket says you want to stay for one year or six months. The two are not the same. Do you see that? Right. The next question they will ask you is your purpose of your visit. Purpose of your visit. Um, people give different reasons for visiting a country. Those who are coming to see relatives or, or friends, if that was what you used to procure or secure your visa, you need to stick to that same reason. Oh, um, in the case of my wife, she was coming to visit her husband. That was the reason we used to secure the visa. So all she had to say is I'm coming to visit my spouse or my husband. Simple as that. I prep her. I actually gave her the coaching over the phone on what to say based on what I know they will ask her. So she was already aware. Now, if you are coming to visit a family member, you cannot change your storyline all of a sudden to something else. In the case of the lady, she said she was coming to visit her mother. But the officer was able to find out at the airport that she was actually planning to visit somebody else who she said is the husband. And she had not disclosed that during the visa application. So it created a problem. Do you see that? See what I mean? Even if you have other people in mind you want to visit, if they were not listed as part of your reason for visiting, you cannot just stupidly be saying them at the airport. It will affect you. It, with all seriousness, it will affect you. Maybe you have some best friends and you have some fiancé or your boyfriend, girlfriend to visit, but they are not the ones you are visiting. You are visiting your dad. Stick to your dad. When I was first going to the U.S. with my U.S. visa from Canada, I remember when I went for the visa, the officer asked me, aside from you going to attend an academic conference as part of you being a student in Canada, you want to attend a conference in U.S., right? That's what I told him I wanted to go to U.S. for. Do you have any other people in mind that you want to visit in the U.S.? Look, I knew right away what that officer in Toronto was trying to do. Guys, I have so many friends in the U.S. I have friends in the U.S. who are in different schools. But I would have been stupid to tell them I plan to visit friends too. One, the original reason I want to go to the U.S. is academic. So you know what I said? I said, no, I just plan to attend a conference, uh, my academic conference, simple as that. And then I get a job done. Now, if I attend a conference and then I decide to do any other business, AOB, it's my own business. But I cannot be revealing too much information when I know that information could be used against me. Simple as that. Stick to it. Stick to who you are visiting to and stick to that storyline. Even if there are other people you have on your list that when you get the time you can visit, keep that in your mouth. When you go, you do your own thing. But you cannot just be saying just anything. Hmm? Purpose of visit. Some people also attend or get visitors visa to come, not because they have families or not because they are attending a conference, but because they are probably coming for tourism. Some people do come here for tourism, meaning they are coming to explore Canada to see the beauty of Canada. Well, if that was your reason for coming to Canada and that was the reason you gave the visa officer, please make sure you stick to the same reason that you are coming to explore Canada. Do not go and change it to something else. The moment you change it, it changes your story. There is an interesting example I have talked about in the past. Let me just give that example. A Nigerian man contacted me. He had gotten a five-year U.S. visa, B1, B2, which is a visitor's visa, um, or a conference of business visa or something like that. Um, the reason he stated for coming to the u.s when he was applying for the visa was to attend a conference let's think carefully he had told the visa officer at the embassy that he's planning to attend a conference he was actually assisted by a travel agent from nigeria so the travel agent helped him to get a conference thing here in the u.s and then he was able to get 
to apply the visa and then they approved it for him. Now, what this man is expected to do when he arrives at JFK or whichever airport is that when he was, he's asked the question, what is your purpose for visiting? He's supposed to stick to the same reason. I'm attending a conference. And then if the official chooses to ask any other question, like what is the name of the conference? What is the location? What time to what time? You can go ahead and provide that. But guess what happened? This man shows up at the airport, lands from the plane. He's so happy he has arrived in Canada. Oh, he's already praying and thanking God that he is no longer in Nigeria. And then the visa officer, sorry, the border official at the airport, ask him the question, what is your purpose or what reason are you coming to Canada, uh, U.S. for? What is your reason for coming to U.S.? Look at what he said. He said, I'm coming to visit my brother. And then he asked him, what is the name? Is he? And if he wants to really, really trap you and get you, when you give him those wrong answers, he will give you a very normal face as if nothing they happen. You know? And you think you're actually doing well and you'll be talking more and more. And then he asked him, what is the name of your brother? And then he mentioned the name. He said, do you have the address of your brother? one thing led to the other by the time the man finished talking the official at the airport said according to our database at the time you were applying for the visa you said you were coming to attend a conference did that change and he said, oh, actually the agent who helped me said i should say this did you guys hear that the agent who helped me said as you said okay <laughs> i don't know what i'm supposed to do but right away guys i'm pretty sure you know what happened is his visa was cancelled uh with the reason that he has committed a crime of misrepresentation meaning that the reason he wanted to come here is not the actual reason he gave the officer so he lied they cancelled his visa and then on top of the cancelling the visa they banned him for five years. After, and after banning him, they organized him and put him on the next available plane heading to Nigeria. That is called deportation. Visitors visa holder are normally the people who go through a lot. So please make sure you are familiar with this. I will no longer beg anybody to share this video. If you like, don't share it. If you go and they ban you, you enjoy it yourself. Eh? so many ignorant people on social media busily watching comedies but applying for visa and they don't even know what next to expect when they arrive all they want to do is to pray pray anointing oil visa 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 and yet they don't spend their time to study what comes with getting a visa and what to do huh and somebody how how i don't understand this so how will somebody just go ahead and work so hard to get a visa and screw it up within just split seconds it's so, it's, it's so, you know, it, it's so heartbreaking because getting a visa is not easy, guys. Any country's visa is not easy to get, especially if you're coming from Africa. You know how it is. To get a U.S. visa is not easy, guys. Even if they give you one-day visa, it's not easy. If you want to go to Germany and they give you just a one-day German visa, it's not easy, guys. So when you put in that effort, whether you did it yourself, a family member did it for you, or whether your agent, your travel agent did it for you, you cannot joke with that thing. Spend some serious time watching some good videos that will coach you and coach you. Come go and put your faith in the hands of the agent who did it for you. When you arrive at the airport, the agent is not going to be there. You better make sure you know what to do. Huh? What is the point in spending your time to go get a visa without spending your time to know what to do? And then on top of that, you spend $1,000, $2,000 to buy an air ticket. Only to arrive and then they turn you around like merry go round and send you back home. It's stupid. It's just stupid. Ignorance. Huh? And they will not even be looking for good, good channels to go and learn. They are busily watching some comedy or some, some music video by this time. Yeah, they have visa. They are going to get their band tomorrow. It's so annoying. It's so heartbreaking when I hear people getting their visas cancelled because of stupid answers that they give. Ignorance is not an excuse. It is one thing to say you did not have anybody to teach you what to do. And it is one thing for you to have information out there by you being lazy and naive not to know. It will be on your own. Hmm? All right. Um, is it possible to go through another interview? Yes. 
I have just told you in the video that the people who are interviewed as Steve say it is a brand new application they are doing are normally visitors visa holder. And I told you the reason why that happens. Because these are normally the people who violate the terms of visitors visa and they never return back to their countries. So especially for the US, if you are entering the US as a visitors visa, you must be prepared because you are likely to be subjected to a brand new interview process, cross-checking every information you gave. You see, if you did not watch that video I did this yesterday on the woman who was banned in the US, take your time and go and watch all of it. Because everything I read was a brand new question in as if she was applying for a visa. The questions she was asked, there is a very good chance that she was actually not the one who even filled the forms, right, online. The agent did everything for her. And when she was going for the interview, it's possible the agent coached her. But it is also very possible that the agent did not give her a copy of whatever information he or she used. And this woman was so excited, she got a visa. And then after that, she spent time buying tickets. And then one thing leads to the other. You see that? Purpose of travel purpose of arriving in the country is one of the reasons people get banned a lot. They have forgotten they are coming for conference. They say they are visiting their friend. They have forgotten they are coming to visit a family member according to the visa application document. They now change their mind and say we are coming here to work. I don't know how silly somebody can be by just changing the story like that without knowing it will be treated as something else, all right? Um, the next question is where you are going to be staying in the country. You need to have an address. Even if it is a hotel, you need to have an address. Remember, these are questions you would have already answered when you were applying for the visa. For example, when the US and also in the UK, you may have done an online application. They may have asked you about where you stay, who is going to take care of your stay and all of that. You may have provided an answer. I remember when I was coming to, I was going to apply for my first U.S. visa in Canada, uh, the online D-160 form. They did ask me where in the U.S. I'm coming to, the address of wherever I'm going to stay. And I had to provide an address. So that address cannot change from the address that I'll be staying when I get at the airport. They are basically going to cross-check. Now, it is possible that maybe you change your mind and you got a new place. You must do your research to find out whether if you tell the officer that you have a brand new address from the which is different from the one you provided, whether it will undermine your um, uh, arrival or it will not affect your arrival. It will affect it. You better stick to the old one. If you have changed it, you better notify them when you get there. If they ask you, let them know. Hey, you know what? I changed the address because the other one I got was too expensive. The accommodation was too expensive. I was able to find a cheaper accommodation. So here is the proof of it, you know. If they ask you for more questions about accommodation, and then, you know, you just you just give them evidence that you have a genuine accommodation. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Um, the other question they may ask you is more question about who you are coming to visit. Like I said, some people come here to attend a conference or attend a business program. They may ask you more questions about that program the name of the program, the duration of the program, who is organizing it, they could ask you. They could ask you if you are participating in the program as a presenter or you are just a participant. They could even ask you how this program is going to have, uh, be useful to you so you can say something. You know why you applied. You better have your things lined up. If you are coming to visit a family member, they may ask you questions about that family member. If you are coming to visit your husband, and you stated that when you're applying for the visa, they may ask you to mention your husband's name again at the airport. You better make sure that the information you provide is the same as the one you provided during the visa application stage. If you are visiting your mother or your brother or your cousin, and that is the reason you use to secure your visa, you need to stick to that. Some people get visitor's visa stating the reason that they are actually coming to visit their friends. You better stick to that. If you are a parent or a family member, and you are attending a, a graduation event of your child, 
in us europe or canada you know some people do travel to go and attend the graduation of their children when they are graduating school right if that is a reason you gave okay if that is a reason you gave them at the time you are applying for your visa please remember to have information about the graduation for example the name of your child the name of the school your child goes to the date that the graduation is happening where you are going to be living make sure that all of this information matches whatever information you provided them does it make sense can someone visit canada and start working this is from michael real michael real michael real i will not give you an answer to that please watch the video from the beginning i have already answered this you see i won't say anything about this i've already answered this so i won't say anything about it you are going to watch the video from the beginning to get the answer okay my career all right i've talked about accommodation as well proof of funds your living expenses how are you planning to stay here do you have money you remember the lady was asked the question yesterday by the u.s official um how much money do you have on you you know why they're asking this question they're asking all these questions to find out whether you have enough money for the duration of your stay if you are staying for one month they know how much money you will need for one month if you are staying for three months they know how much money you will need for accommodation and food in three months if you are staying for six months they know how much money an average person needs for a six month stay so when they ask you these questions they are trying to know whether you are adequately prepared financially for your visit or your business trip or your whatever trip tourism trip a lot of people do not estimate how much it will cost to live in a country and so they are planning to stay for six months and it is estimated that if you want to stay for six months you need about five thousand us dollars or canadian dollars to live here for six months but they are not aware then they ask them the question how much money do you have for your trip in staying here and then they say i only have five hundred dollars and then the officer asked them, is that the only money you have? He said, oh, that's the only money I have. So for six months, is that what you're going to use to take care of yourself? And then one thing leads to the other, and one thing leads to the other, especially for those who are not prepared. Well, if you are coming to visit a family member, you must be clear to mention who is going to take care of you. If you are the one taking care of your own self, you must be ready to provide them with proof, either by way of your bank statement or by way of any other means of money that you have. If whoever is hosting you is taking care of you, make sure that there is a letter that is ready showing that this person is ready to take care of your living expenses. I'm pretty sure you may have provided this as part of your visa application documentation that the person who is hosting you or inviting you is the one to take care of you. If you don't have all of this lineup, it can affect you big, big time. An example, do you remember I did a video some few days ago and I mentioned that a Nigerian man who was coming from Europe uh, with a European passport to visit Canada. Um, whilst he was transiting through France, he ended up getting his visa cancelled in France, even though he was not yet in Canada, he was just transiting. One of the questions the airport official in France asked this man was for him to produce his bank statement to show that he has money for his trip to Canada. And I believe the man did not have his bank statement with him. And he did not have proof of that well i can't say much if you're a visitor you cannot work in the country legally and so you must be ready to show proof that for the duration of your stay you have adequate money either physical cash or money in your bank account or money from your sponsor or money from whoever is hosting you if you don't have this things lined up it can affect you a lot that is it about visitor's visa now one of the other questions they may ask you is whether you have committed any crime that prevents any crime um, you have committed any crime that is on record this question is a trap but it's also meant to um, help the official at the airport know whether there is something that you have done which they should be worried about before they allow you into the country um, some people may have been convicted of some crimes it may have been a jailable offense so you may have been to jail it may be a felony um so long as you have served the time 
for your offense and you have been cleared i don't see why you should hide it i don't personally see why you should hide it especially if you know you have already served it and then you have nothing on your mark especially if you know that whatever you did is not something that is bad i don't see why you should hide it some people actually hide it uh, if you watch the video I did earlier today, somebody actually wrote under there. Somebody commented and said he knows a friend who had a crime and did not know that that question would hurt him. The officer asked the question, have you been committed of any crime? And he said no. Then the officer said, according to their database, it shows that you have been committed, convicted of XYZ crime. And so based on that, we cannot allow you into the country. You have lied to us. You see that? It could lead to something. And so guys i'm not a criminologist i'm not a, crim uh, a lawyer whatever if you have any criminal record you bet you better be talking to a qualified immigration lawyer not me so that they can advise you on whether they think it is one of the things that can affect your visit to a country the implications of not disclosing this during your application or the implications of not disclosing this if you are asked a real question at the airport about it is that woe unto you if they find out if they do find out it simply will lead to a cancellation and a ban for five to ten years depending on which country um but if they don't find out if they don't find out if they, for some reason their system doesn't show it you could get away with it but if you are not lucky and they do find out it definitely will undermine your ability to get clear to enter the country at the airport okay uh, so that is it about crimes. I'm not here to tell you about which crime can allow you and which one. One, I'm not a lawyer, so I won't speak about that. It will be your duty to find out if you have any criminal record. What are that record prevents you from entering a specific country that you are going to. I repeat, it is not my job to say that. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a criminal lawyer. I can't talk about that. It is your job to find out. I hope it makes sense to you. Okay? All right. Um... um Aside from that, the other reason why a lot of people work, 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 guys, work. Uh, some people are here to visit, but they know within their heart that they have another reason for trying to enter. They want to work in a country. Um, you see, they did not tell the visa application officer that they are coming to visit and work. They only said they are coming to visit. But then when they get to the airport, they want to now tell the official at the airport that they are here to work. I, I cannot think of what to say to you guys. Stick to your motive for coming to the country, which is on paper. Even if you plan to do any other thing, yeah. Let me give you an example. When I was coming to this country, my main reason for coming was to uh, come in school. I got a visa. To come as a student when i got to the airport they asked me why am i coming i said i'm coming to school how long since i know i can stay here for the duration of my program i said one year it's not a visitor's visa it's a student visa a student visa i'm allowed to stay up to the duration of my visa or my program right so i said one year which is fine but i knew within me i was looking for opportunities in canada too here is the truth since i finished that one year program i've been here for eight good years now do you know what that means? It means I had different other reasons for coming to Canada. One of them is to get my papers. One of them is to stay. But you see, I'm not stupid to go and tell the official at the airport. I'm not stupid, man. It's, it's naive to go and tell the official, well, I'm not just coming here to study. I'm coming here to work. For what? Is that a visa they gave you? No. They didn't give you a work visa. They gave you a student visa. So you better tell them you're here to do that business of school. <laughs> you know what I mean? You are here to visit. Stick to that reason. If you come and then you decide to work, go and marry somebody, go and meet your friends. That is another thing, oh. But you cannot just go and be giving them all kind of. Hmm. Anyway, finally, some countries are not friendly when it comes to refugee claims. I'm happy to say Canada is one of the countries that is very, very friendly to refugees. Some countries are not. For example, in the US, some people who come on visitor's visa make the mistake of telling the uh, officials at the airport that they are actually planning to seek asylum to become refugees. 
Meanwhile, they are coming on a B1, B2 or on a visa visa. Those of you who are in the U.S., you can educate me the more on this. How safe is that? You see, unlike some countries like Canada, where if you come by road or by air and you change to say that, you know what, even though I'm here as a visitor, I have a real threat on my life or my country, so I need protection as a refugee. Some countries can actually allow you in and they can actually process you in and even help you settle as a refugee. But you know the situation is not the same. Let me give you an example. In the U.S., for example, those who try to come to the country illegally, what do they do to them? They put them in a camp, isn't it? They go and put them in a camp, hmm? concentration camp or whatever they say. Have you heard about Australia? Do you know Australia has a whole island which they have built just to go and keep refugees there? Hmm? Something, something island, what is the name? Those of you in Australia, tell me. So if you come to Australia, and you are coming to Australia as a visitor or as a student, and then you arrive at the airport, and then you now go and tell them you are coming as a refugee. I want somebody who is watching me and is familiar with Australian immigration. I'm not an expert on that one. I don't know much about it. Tell me, will they send that person to the island where they keep the refugees to go and stay there without getting the chance to come into Australia proper? Or they won't do that? I know Canada is more friendlier, but you have to do your research before you know what to say. Do your research. Don't just come to the airport and say, no, 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 now I don't want to be student. I want to be a refugee. Make sure, guys, I'm saying it is your responsibility to go and do research. Go and do research and see whether if you come as a visitor, you can at the airport change your mind and say you want to be a refugee. Go and do your research and find out which one is safe, whether it is safe for you to change your story. Because for some countries, the moment you change that story, they are either deporting you or they are sending you straight to a camp where they are going to lock you up in a camp. Huh? You watch videos in the U.S. and you see how many migrants are kept in camps and then eventually deported just because of their reason for entering the country. Do you see that? All right. Uh, that is it. Um, is there anything I haven't covered regarding visitor's visa? I think I've covered everything. If you have any question, please post it down there so I can see it. If you have any question about visitor's visa, questions at the airport, uh, please let me know. I've covered almost everything to the best of my ability. I don't think there's anything I, I, I have. But if you think I have missed anything or if you have a question, I want to just use the next two or three minutes to take questions from you. Please post your questions down there, okay? See my family there? They're having fun. Mm. Good. We're in the library, okay? Come here on Saturdays. Mm. All right, somebody has a question. Let me see. Please, I can... Um, please, this is from Mrs. Mabel Opoku. Please, if I come as a visitor, can I change it uh, as a student when I'm in? Uh, yes, after you have been cleared by... Uh, I'm not going to answer that question. I have a video on that already. How to change your visitor's visa. Please go and watch that video. I want questions that are related to what I've covered. The answer is you can change your visitor's visa, especially if you're coming to Canada. I am not familiar with other countries, so I won't speak about US and other, but I know for Canada you can change it. But there is a process. I have done a video on that. So, Mrs. Opoku, go and watch that video. It's on my YouTube channel, Chaco Melonia. It's also on my Facebook. If you go through my old videos, you'll find it. Uh, Michael Kwanza, please, I'm going to Australia as a PhD student. Is it possible to get resident permit after my PhD? I believe so, but do your research as well. I am more of Canadian content, um, but I believe in Australia you should be able to do that, okay? But you can do your own research too as well. Uh, Nana Ajimanu Usu Befi, uh, do they have May, June, July intake for international students in Canada? I, unfortunately, I have to skip your question. It is irrelevant to the topic. Uh, what is the need of visiting if you can't work or something must be done before working? Please, I want to know. Okay, there's a question from Michael Real. Real, what is the need of visiting if you can't work or something must be done before working? Please, I want to know. Well, Michael Real, it simply means you don't know the purpose of a visitor visa, unfortunately. I repeat. Now, your question 
what is the need of a visitor's visa if you cannot work? It simply means you do not understand the need for a visitor's visa. Hmm? I want you to take your time to read about visitor's visa and why that visa program is there. If you want to enter a country to work, you are applying for the wrong visa if you go for visitor's visa. Right? So spend some time, go on Google and read about the type of visa that allows people to visit and the type of visa that allows people to work. They are not the same. Hmm? You need to be familiar with the specific visa that addresses your issue. Do you understand what I mean? Hmm? So if you are coming as a student, you see, that is why they have created different visa programs for different e needs. So you cannot use a student visa and try to use that to do something else. You cannot use a spousal visa and try to use that to do something else. Unless that particular visa allows you to. All right. Does it make sense to you, Mr. Michael Real? So do some research on what a visitor visa is. Remember, I said I have videos on this. So if you do spend your time watching my videos, you understand what a visitor visa is about as well. Does it make sense to you? Now, oh, a champ on yourself, Francis. Um, you have to make sure that you ticket date and pocket money match. Yeah. You, okay. Good. Um, your, your your comment here has made me remember something. Return ticket, return ticket. If you're on a visitor's visa, is it advisable to get a return ticket or it is advisable to just get a one-way ticket? The answer will most likely be yes and no. For depending on the type of official you meet at the airport, some of them don't even care if you have just a one-way ticket. Some don't care. You can always explain to them why you have a one-way ticket. But those who are able to secure a return ticket with a specific return date that matches the reason they give the visa officer, they are more likely to be able to survive to enter a country, especially when the question of when are you returning comes up. There are some people who are refused, especially because they do not have a return ticket. And then the official say, well, why did you buy one way? And you did not buy a return ticket since you are only visiting for two weeks or three weeks why haven't you bought it if you have a better reason why you don't have a return ticket you need to give it to them you could say that you know what at the time that you were buying the ticket prices were so high so you were you only bought maybe one way hoping to find deals so that you know when you get a cheaper one you can buy it but you definitely have the money for your return ticket some people will accept it some officials may say you know what they are not satisfied with that it is up to you Remember, whoever you are coming to visit or whatever reason you are coming to visit this the country for, make sure you do your research to find out whether it is better for you to come with a one-way ticket or with a return ticket. Everybody's phone is different. With my wife, when she was coming, we bought a one-way ticket. As a visitor, she didn't have trouble. I was able to later buy a return ticket for her. But I also know somebody who bought just a one way and they question the person a lot, depending on the type of official you get at the airport. So it could always differ from official to official. But you do your analysis and see which one is better for you. Even if you don't buy your return ticket, have a very good reason to give them just in case they bring up the question at the airport. Okay, that is it about return ticket. Let me see if there is any other one. Love a caribou. Uh, should in case the border should the border officer ask me about. Um, who is going to pick me at the airport and the ins and and inside me i know i have a person in canada that's definitely coming to pick me up but i didn't include this name on application please, please can i still mention it uh to whoever is picking you at the airport always ask yourself the question if you mention that person's name will it put you in more trouble um Ask, answer that question yourself. You know who is picking you up. So I want you to be the one to answer that question. If you mention that person's name, will they put you into more trouble? Hmm? I'm not going to be the one to tell you this. There are airport services. There are taxis waiting in front of every airport. You can always pick a taxi to go home. Even if somebody is picking you up, you can always. It's not a crime to say, you know what? I will be using an airport taxi to get home. It's not a crime. Simple. You're using an airport taxi. But you see, if you go and say somebody is picking you up and you know the person's name will not affect your visa, 
straightforward go ahead for it for example i went to pick my wife at the airport i am the one who is inviting her to come to canada if they ask her who is picking her from the airport i expect her to say me because i'm actually listed on her visa application but let's say that you are coming here to visit your okay let's say you are coming here for a conference to attend a conference okay you are coming here to attend a conference let me use another example you are coming here to attend a business conference you told them you are here for just two weeks to attend a conference and then maybe the official asks you at the airport um do you have anybody who is picking you at the airport and you say yes um who is picking you at the airport oh my fiance can you tell me about your fiance oh i i met her online on a dating website so she's picking me up guys i want to ask you guys a question here this person is attending a conference for two three weeks got a conference visa but when they, she was asked who is picking uh, him up when he was asked he said a fiance and then the officer followed up by asking more questions about the fiance and then he says i met this fiance online on a dating website i want you guys to tell me will this be a relevant information that will help her with her processing at the airport or this is an irrelevant information is it oversharing or it is not oversharing i want you guys to answer that question yourself let me see if I can get some there. Okay, Temple Mike is asking the question about to add a, uh, at a point of entry, when do we show the arrive can app? Okay, I'll answer that question. Okay, so I just told you guys to answer the question about the person who says he's going to be picked up by his online fiance jean pierre jean pierre says it is irrelevant jean pierre how are you doing uh for for mom kevin says it is irrelevant information the first one says it's not relevant um ernestine satu kangaju says it is irrelevant information temple might not relevant anya collins irrelevant response sapon stuo uh oversharing you see the answer you are getting there yeah? uh and esteem start to say she has no business telling them about a fiance michael real no good adesina hamed olam lekan says oversharing michael cc afudonko it is irrelevant do you see the kind of answers you are getting so even the followers who are on this page are able to tell that when you provide such information it will lead to you having yourself putting yourself into more more trouble do you see that your online fiance that you have been dating we the office already or the office already thinks say that one did they take and collect paper for canada you you are visiting for conference you they go talk about that one guys vida deborah it is irrelevant okay siama george it is irrelevant let me give you another example there was a time that I saw this comment under one of my videos. I think it was a visitor's visa on Canada. And then the person asked the question. So let's say I get a visitor's visa and I'm coming to Canada. And then whilst I am visiting Canada, I plan to go and visit my online girlfriend who lives in the U.S. When I arrive at the airport, can I tell the visa officer, sorry, the airport official that I want to cross the border and go and visit my woman in the US or she will actually come and pick me from Canada. She will cross the border and come and pick me from Canada. When I saw that question, I just held my hand, I just held my, my, my hand like this and I said, oh, whoa. <laughs> you know, like you are visiting Canada, but you want your online girlfriend from US to cross the border and come and pick you and you want to tell the official at the airport. Oh my, my goodness, why do people blow up visa like this? People blow up visa. Oh. You have no idea how many people they get visa where they blow them like that. Oh. They, they blow them like water. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying this session. Hmm? I hope you guys are enjoying this session. Know what you, that is why if you are traveling, eh? and you know, you know, you know why a lot of our African brothers, they run into this trouble we are so secretive 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 is the word secretive 
when people apply for visa, they don't tell nobody for all kinds of reasons. Some of them are valid reasons, spiritual reasons. For example, when he tells some friends, they can juju you, they can witchcraft you, they can do so, people don't say it. Now, so because of that, even if they need to consult somebody who knows, a lot of people don't. They want to hide it. And so when these people go through problems, huh, they go through the problem just by themselves alone. You see that? Do you know why a lot of people are comfortable sending me an email to tell me they have gotten visa? In fact, when they send me that email, they tell me, don't tell anybody, you, please. One year, don't tell anybody. Because, you see, it's just who we are like Africans, right? We don't trust ourselves most of the time. We think when we tell people, you know, some people get juju powers. They can stop you from traveling, which is true, you know. So, but, you see, you must always know who you can trust with information. Somebody that you know is credible and can help you. Look, always have somebody that you, is credible, that you can go to with maybe one or two questions if you need. But if you're traveling for the first time and you don't talk to anybody, when you run into trouble, eh, you daze. You know what they call daze? D-A-Z. Yeah? When, when a thing happened to you for airport, eh, you collapse. Some people actually collapse. When they cancel their visa, they collapse. They say, Jesus, this visa where I tie get. This visa where I tie get. Jesus. They, 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 some people collapse at the airport when they go through this. Some people collapse, actually. All right. Finally, if you are a visa holder as a visitor, Aside from the fact that you are not allowed to legally work with your visitor's visa unless you change it, most countries do not also allow people who are visitor's visa holder to take advantage of the medical system illegally. Illegally is the word, illegally. What do I mean by that? It simply means they already know that a lot of people travel for what we call medical tourism. Medical tourism visa. What is that? It is when people get visitor's visa to travel to certain countries, not because they want to visit, but because they want to go and deliver their babies there. They know, guys, if you are coming on a visitor's visa and you are a woman especially, and your tummy looks very suspicious, especially those whose tummy can give impression that they are pregnant, Depending on the type of official you have, they may ask you the question whether you are pregnant or not. You are going to be answering that question. Yesterday's video, the woman was actually asked the question whether she's pregnant or not. Now, this is not because pregnancy is a crime. It's not a crime to be pregnant. But you see, they know already that when people come here to visit, some of them deliberately come because they want to give birth in the U.S. and get their children U.S passport or canadian passport or uk passport so the moment you give them that impression <laughs> they, 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 they have to actually isolate you and when they isolate you they have to actually now find out whether your real intention was to visit or to deliver in the u.s or to deliver in canada they have the right to cancel your visa if they think that you are coming to take advantage of the health care system here Mommy. what does choco melonia mean by health care system and taking advantage of it here, there are certain categories of people who are legally allowed to enjoy the health benefits of their health care. The citizens, green card holders or permanent residents, international students, permanent residents, protected persons such as refugees, and any other group of people who are considered to be legally allowed to enjoy. Visitors' visa are not allowed to enjoy certain benefits. A visitor visa holder is not entitled to enjoy free health care. In fact, if you want a visitor visa, it is actually a requirement that you need your own travel insurance. It's one thing I'll talk about. It is expected that you buy your own travel insurance or medical insurance if you are a visitor. Why? Because the health care system will not cover you if you fall sick. The health care system will not cover you if you go to the hospital to deliver as a visitor most advanced countries the healthcare system does not allow you to enjoy free health care if you are a visitor so you need to show them proof that you have already purchased a travel insurance or a medical insurance if you are coming to visit if you are coming to visit and you have not made provision for a travel insurance or an international medical insurance for yourself so that if you are pregnant your insurance covers you and your pregnancy and you don't have that proof and the official looks at you, your belly big, you have one 
almost when you feel like both of them are born and on each other. Your stomach may be like one bank, one bank like that. Eh? And they look at you where, where, where they think, say, you know, you're pregnant. But the question where could they come? Hmm? Yeah. What a lot of women do is this. I'm not teaching you this to go and do it. I'm only telling you what people do. If you go and do it, it's your own business. Hmm? I'm not telling you to go. I'm only telling you what people do. What a lot of women do is that when they are pregnant, they dress in such a way that it doesn't show the pregnancy. You know, some women, they can actually dress in a way you won't see. Eh? When you see them wear those big, big ones where they look like Jalabia, eh? see? And then they dress like them. They big angel gown, big, where they cover everywhere like that. You see, they hide the five-month pregnancy with that too. Eh? As in my boob, hip up like that, where they make big, eh? They go, they go dress some in such a way so you know go see them. They go look nice, you know go see them, but the, as they lift that one, they say, hey, five months. Man. <laughs> so most of our celebrities, this is what they do. Our celebrities, most of them, this is what they do. They get a show to go and play a show there. <laughs> you and your Banku stories, but me and my Banku, I love Banku. Everybody knows I love Banku. But I don't like Bukum Banku. That one, that one, that one is stupidity and foolishness is something else. So I don't like that one too. <laughs> But I love Ria Banku. Anyway, um, do you know what most of our celebrities or politicians do? They will get whatever visa they have, whether it is visitor's visa or whatever visa they have. Huh? And then if they are going there and they are women, they make sure they go when they are about three months away from delivery, four months away from delivery. So normally when they are about four months, you know yourself, the women especially, they know themselves. Some women, they can go six months, their pregnancy will not show. Some women can go five months. They have small bellies. You won't see it. Some women, too, when they are two months, everybody will know. They are puking everywhere. Especially if you know that you are the type who pukes slightest thing. You are throwing saliva. Huh? Check all this before. Before you go and give, especially if you're a visitor's visa holder. For international students, this might not be a problem. But this is mostly a problem for people who are visiting. Because, you see, they are trying to find out whether you have other plans or visiting aside from. You know, some people actually come here because they want to give birth and get passport for their children. That is why they are trying to enter the visit, right? So, just watch. They already, they know. It's not like me where they leak on. Um, go and watch their border videos. You will notice that people get, re they return people all the time because they are visiting, but they are looking nine months pregnant. Uh, their cheeks are all huge. Signs of pregnancy everywhere. And then the airport official says, I don't think you are coming here because of visit. I am convinced that you are coming here just to take advantage of the American healthcare, Canadian healthcare, or what have you. All right? So check that. Travel insurance, medical insurance, it is mostly required or it is mostly advised that if you are a visitor visa holder, you get this. Why? Because you are not covered by the healthcare insurance. It is even worse in the US if you are a visitor visa holder, B1, B2, and you don't have your own insurance. When you get it, when you fall sick, and there you go see the real meaning of dollar. You go slap with dollar, where you go see where we say you they owe hundreds of thousands. Eh? Many of our celebrities where they see where they go, they give birth. You know how much they owe for that country where they some of them know if you go back or because they're going to give birth and they are owing hundreds of thousands of dollars because they give birth in a hospital with their insurance. Don't make such mistakes too. Hmm? Make sure you plan well. God bless you. And thanks for watching Chocolate Millennia. I don't think there is anything else I haven't covered. I've covered almost everything and every aspect of this. I hope you enjoyed this session. Consider hitting the share button. Share them on your Facebook. Share them on your WhatsApp. Share them on your Instagram. Let people see this kind of videos. I believe somebody will benefit from this. God bless you. And thanks for watching. I'll see you another time. And remember, you don't need more money. You need more wisdom. In fact, we, you and I, we all need wisdom. When we have wisdom, we will not make silly mistakes that leads to the cancellation of our visa that we prayed for and we drank anointing oil for. And we had to sit in a, a, a bucket for a pastor to bath for us to get those visas. Those of you whose visa were commanded by uh, Opambo and Obinim. You know Obinim, he said he can do spiritual one to go and claim the visa for you. And maybe you went to see Obinim, Prophet Obinim, one prophet, and the prophet went spiritually to go and collect the visa for you. If you are the type who use those kind of prophets, eh, when you go, make sure so you don't go and blow it by giving stupid, silly answers. Eh? The advice, a word to the wise, is in the northern region of Ghana. <laughs> not, not in Nigeria. God bless you, but I think... All right, Joanna, say bye-bye.
to them. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. Take care. Okay. Mm -hmm.